Welcome to our first lecture on Sanitation Safety Planning online training course. My name is Kate Medlicott and I will be one of your guides as you acquire the skills, knowledge and resources to initiate, implement and sustain sanitation safety planning processes in your locality. This first session is an introduction to sanitation safety planning in which we will learn about safe sanitation systems, the significance of sanitation for human health, the WHO guidelines on sanitation and health and their recommendations, and the definition of sanitation safety planning, its methodology and benefits. Let's start with the definitions of safe sanitation systems. Safe sanitation systems are arrangements of technologies and practices designed and used to separate human excreta from human contact at all steps of the sanitation chain, from toilet, containment, storage and treatment, conveyance, treatment and end use or disposal. To be safe, a sanitation system must fulfill minimum requirements of design, construction, operation and maintenance at each step of the chain. Also, a safe sanitation system is embedded in an implementation framework for safe service delivery that ensures effective planning, delivery, maintenance, regulation and monitoring. Safe sanitation is essential for health. That includes preventing infectious diseases and also improving and maintaining mental and social well-being. Safe sanitation systems contribute directly to transmission of diseases including faecal oral infections like diarrhea and cholera, helminths or intestinal worm infections, and vector-borne diseases. Unsafe sanitation has indirect impacts caused by repeated infections. For instance, Unsanitary conditions have been linked with stunted growth, malnutrition and impaired cognitive function. Lack of access to suitable sanitation facilities is also a major cause of fear, anxiety and shame associated with open defecation or shared sanitation. To understand sanitation's impact on health, we need to understand the pathways through which sanitation influences health. We need to consider the intervention, which includes both technologies and behaviour change activities, as well as the implementation, which includes policy, regulation, finance and service delivery. These influence health via multiple intermediate outcomes. An important intermediate outcome is access to, uptake and sustained use of sanitation interventions, both the technologies and the behaviours. These are assumed to reduce environmental faecal load, which in turn reduces human exposure to faecal pathogens. Ultimately, this is expected to lead to improved health outcomes and social well-being. To understand how effective sanitation interventions have been in protecting health, the WHO commissioned studies that reviewed existing evidence. Evidence confirms that sanitation has a positive impact on infectious diseases and well-being. Overall, greater access to sanitation is associated with significantly lower risks of diarrhoea and other infections. However, many interventions have shown lower than expected health outcomes, leading to a concern on the quality of the implementation. In particular, that interventions are not succeeding to fully interrupt transmission pathways. There are several reasons for this, including many interventions don't reach levels of toilet access and use in the community that are high enough to remove pathogens from the environment. In fact, according to the studies, disease reduction will not be detected unless the coverage of sanitation at the community level is very high. And many sanitation systems are of low quality and do not effectively contain excreta, meaning they contaminate the environment where people are exposed to untreated waste. In response, in 2018, WHO published its Guidelines on Sanitation and Health, which are an authoritative health-based guidance on maximising the health impact of sanitation investments. The overall purpose of these guidelines is to ensure that sanitation systems are designed and managed to safely protect human health. The guidelines summarise the evidence on the links between sanitation and health. They provide evidence-informed recommendations they offer guidance to international, national and local sanitation policy makers and practitioners, and they present a number of tools and resources to ensure that sanitation interventions protect health. 
Based on the comprehensive evidence review, four main recommendations were derived for action by national and local authorities. The first is to ensure universal access and use of toilets that safely contain excreta. This recommendation urges governments to prioritise elimination of open defecation and universal access to toilets while planning for equitable progress. It also indicates that authorities need to strive to cover entire communities with a minimum standard of safe toilet and safe containment, using shared and public toilets if necessary to ensure everyone has access, and to use demand side and supply side approaches concurrently. The second recommendation is about the safe sanitation service chain, and this is where the major health improvements are achieved. Safety must be ensured along the entire sanitation service chain, which means we need a safely, to safely plan and design all steps of the chain, from the toilet, containment and storage, conveyance, treatment and air use and disposal. The recommendations emphasise technologies should be context specific and respond to the local physical, social and institutional conditions. Incremental improvements should be based on risk assessment and management approaches, such as sanitation safety planning. The third recommendation indicates that to increase efficiency and health impact, sanitation should be provided and managed as part of a package of locally delivered services. This includes broader development programs and policies such as housing, urban planning, and coordination with local water supply, drainage, and solid waste management planning. The fourth recommendation outlines the key functions by the health sector to ensure that sanitation systems protect public health. So what can we do as local practitioners to implement these recommendations? We need to ensure that we maximise the health benefit of sanitation interventions. This means that we need to ensure that systems and services are selected to respond to the local context that investments and systems management are based on local level risk assessment along the entire sanitation chain. And with this, we need to ensure incremental improvements are based on local level risk assessment. So users, local communities, sanitation workers, consumers and farmers are protected. So how can we do that? We can do it by applying the Sanitation Safety Planning or SSP. SSP is the WHO recommended approach for local level risk assessment and management for sanitation systems. It presents a step-by-step -step methodology to assist in the implementation of risk assessment and management for the entire sanitation service chain. SSP ensures that the system is managed to meet the health objectives. Originally, the SSP manual was published in 2015 to assist with the implementation of the 2006 guidelines on safe use of wastewater, excreta and grey water. In the 2022 edition, the principles of SSP have been adopted more widely and aligned with the guidelines on sanitation and health, and has been updated to incorporate climate risks and adaptation in the sanitation system. Sanitation safety planning helps maximise the health benefits of sanitation, it guides operators to prioritise risk management efforts where it will have the most health impact. It sets a plan for incremental improvement at each step of the sanitation service chain. It targets investments to the highest health risk. And it coordinates efforts of the many stakeholders along the sanitation chain. Most importantly, sanitation safety planning brings the focus onto the fundamental purpose of sanitation, which is to protect health. In total, the SSP methodology consists of six modules. In Module 1, we define the SSP area and the SSP priorities, as well as the membership of the team. In Module 2, we, can, we prepare a complete description of the sanitation system. In Module 3, we identify hazards, hazardous events, and carry out a health risk assessment, including the effects of climate change. In Module 4, we select improvement measures that address the highest risks. We use selected options to develop and implement an incremental improvement plan. In Module 5, we prepare a monitoring and verification plan. And finally, in Module 6, we develop supporting programs and evaluate the effectiveness of our SSP. Carrying out the SSP process will result in two products, a prioritised incremental improvement plan and an operational monitoring plan for regular monitoring and periodic verification. In summary, 
SSP is the WHO recommended approach for local risk assessment and management for sanitation systems. SSP helps maximise health benefits and minimise health risks. SSP guides while prioritising and targeting health risk management efforts where it will have the most impact. SSP can be used to coordinate the efforts of the many stakeholders along the sanitation service chain and to stimulate policy dialogue. In this first lecture, you've learned about safe sanitation systems, the significance of sanitation for human health, the WHO guidelines on sanitation and health and its core recommendations, and the definition of SSP and its methodology and benefits. I recommend downloading the WHO guidelines on sanitation and health to learn more about sanitation in Chapter 1 and the recommendations and good practices in Chapter 2. You should also download the SSP manual and read the introduction. In the following lecture, we will start implementing SSP. In particular, Module 1, Preparing for SSP. Thanks for watching.